Welcome to my little trip down road testing memory lane. Today I'm not going to go too far down that lane and just talk about um, my 2022 as, uh, as a road tester and um, some of the things we've been getting up to, some of the bikes we've ridden, some of the highlights, there's lots. Um, the biggest thing for me really is um, um, kind of celebrating 20 years of being a, an MCM road tester. And, uh, and that seems mad. I can't believe the time has gone so fast. Um, but time flies when you're having fun, doesn't it? So um, you can see all about how I became a, an MCM road tester in uh, one of my previous videos. Uh, so I won't bore it with you now. Um, but um, I just wanted to say that um, as a result of making that video, um, I've got loads of new subscribers, loads of comments, loads of lovely comments. So. Thank you very much for everyone who's taken the time to watch the videos and, and make comments and uh, and hopefully the Q&A videos have been quite interesting as well. Um, this might be a long video, um, so bear with me. Um, you might wanna get a, a refreshment of some kind to see you through. Um, but so let's uh, let, let's crack on and, and kind of talk about the highlights of the year and to kick off last January, beginning of January, um, all the talk was about the Suzuki GSX-S1000 GT. Um, we'd ridden it at the launch um, a couple of months before the end of 2021 um, and was really impressed. I mean, this is the first Suzuki really um, that was kind of, it wasn't all news, it's based on a GSX-S1000, um, but it kind of had a bit of something about it. It looked new, it's kind of, it revisited the, the traditional sports tourer kind of genre because bikes have moved away from that to become tall rounders and adventure bikes. So it's nice to see a conventional uh, sports tourer. And at the launch, we really, really liked it and still do. Um, when we move the test on, we do a launch test first and then we normally compare, compare it to other bikes. And that's how the, kind of the, the process works normally with testing new bikes. Um, so the obvious competition was to put it up against the Kawasaki Ninja 1000 SX. We did a, an MCN 250 with it, which was absolutely Baltic. Um, there was ice inside my visor when we were going around, so it wasn't particularly pleasant. Um, and it's strange, on a Suzuki, the temperature gauge, um, well, the outside temperature gauge reads, reads high. So it was actually saying it was eight, nine degrees when it was really close to freezing, which um, is a bit dodgy, really, because you want to be right into the conditions. Um, but you could feel it was cold anyway. The Kawasaki, we also tested it around the Peak District as well for a, an MCM video. Um, the Kawasaki turned out to be much smoother, more refined. Um, made the Suzuki feel a little bit short geared, a little bit buzzy. Um, and that's really interesting because I think that when we test new bikes at a launch, you get an opinion of the bikes. They're always presented in the best case scenario by the manufacturer and you normally ride the bike somewhere nice. You never really get the bike to yourself. You never really get to spend quality time with it. You're normally riding on a launch in a train of riders where you can't stop and faff around with the, the settings and all the rest of it. Um, and everything I've, I've thought about the GSX-S still holds true from the launch, but it's nice to be able to place it when you ride other bikes. And I think if I only ever rode bikes on launches, I'd have a very different opinion of bikes than I actually do because we're lucky enough to, to ride lots of different bikes and lots of different scenarios and ride them with each other and you get to see where they fit. Um, the, the bike was, it, it's a fantastic bike for Suzuki, but I just think it could be a little bit more refined. Um, we also used that bike uh, for a week's worth of um, videos in the spring um, where we did some videos for Highways England and we, we spoke about riding tips, um, bike maintenance with Chris Walker, state of mind. We did it with a, a bike, advanced bike instructor, ex-police rider and a fighter pilot. That was pretty cool. Um, so yeah, we got a lot of miles on the GS6S. It's, it's a fantastic bike, but it just could be a little bit more refined. Um, the beginning of the year, we also uh, I also took part in a little used bike test with, with Bike Magazine. Rode some lovely bikes, including an original Triumph um, Daytona, or not the original one, the, the T595 
in that mustard yellow color which looked amazing sounded awesome and then from the sublime to the ridiculous we ride all kinds of bikes and then i got to ride a honda adv 350 scooter and um, i love maxi scooters i love Mac twist and goes they're just so easy and the adv was actually really good really fast as well uh way faster than um legal motorway speeds so you know why would you really have anything else really good on fuel really cheap to run i really like it and then after that we do our first launch of the year which is in malaga um, and it's bmw's new k1600 range so the bikes have been updated slightly just be a bit more refined have that nice color dash that they have now um it was a bit of a wham bam thank you launch a little bit chaotic it was only it's only a two-day launch so you spend all day get into Spain when you get there you have your technical presentation in the evening and then the next day we rode the bikes and then flew home that night so uh, when you've got to fit in the writing of the tests in between that it, it's a little bit fraught and the old anxiety meter starts to flicker a little bit for me um, and also it wasn't helped by the fact there were four bikes we were testing the GT, GTL, Grand America and B bobber and basically it was a free-for-all we could ride what bikes we wanted but MCN only wanted the GT version so I had to kind of fight my way to get the the bike I needed each time which it's a bit stressful but um we got the job done and, and they're, they're beautiful bikes but interestingly you know the six cylinder really smooth you'd think it's the ultimate touring bike but in actual fact we rode a GTL against the R1250 RT later in the year, which is the twin cylinder boxer. And to be honest, that's better. It's more comfortable. It's got a better riding position. It doesn't sort of slump you in the seat. Um, the wind protection is better. It's got it's less wind noise, much more agile, much punchier, um, and still got all the bells and whistles. And it's got that radar cruise control as well, which the K1600 hasn't got, which I'm not a big fan of anyway, so it wasn't a big deal. But um, <clears throat> that was interesting. The RT is still, there's probably a handful of bikes that are around, which are the best in class, and they kind of stay best in class forever, really. And, and the RT is one of them. Um, talking of best in class, we rode the, the Tiger 660 um, Triumph at its launch at the tail end of last year. Uh, and again a few times this year and that is a fantastic bike it's one of those bikes that a bit like an mt07 which i've mentioned in the previous video on paper is is a nothing kind of bike really hasn't got particularly impressive power or spec or anything like that but it's so well conceived and so well developed it's just it's just beautiful it's got more than enough power um, handles beautifully it's got a fair amount of toys on for the price and we decided to do a little bit of a grand test with it we decided to do a thousand miles in five days which around uk which is which isn't as easy as it would be to do in on the continent where you can just ride all down a motorway and, and probably crash out a thousand miles pretty easy in a day um, as part of our thousand mile trip we went to the triumph museum we went to uh, betsy coed in in wales and then back down um, to the bike shed in London and Margate, where I, uh, where I come from, and then finishing off at Stanford, where I live now. Um, but Sod's Law is I chose to do it in that time when we had those three big back-to-back -back storms. And uh, riding it from Wales to Margate in a day was in the the worst day of the storm so uh, it was actually the calm before the storm going across wales it was relatively quiet all the roads were empty because the advice was not to go out um so it's beautiful riding through wales but then as as we got into england you know um around bedford area rugby and then down the m1 it was awful it was it was really scary that i was leaning over a lot on the motorway just going in a straight line and i was frightened the the wind was going to take me into the barrier so i decided to go the a roads which is even worse because a lot of the fields and stuff i was going past really exposed trees down and everything so i had to hold myself up in uh, in the services at toddington just to wait for the worst to, to clear and then made my way to london to the bike shed and then to, to to margate and it was it was really sketchy especially over the bridges i didn't enjoy that at all but the bike 
the buy it was actually felt better on the buy than it was on on foot so the aerodynamics must be just amazing and then staying with triumph we tested the speed triple 1200 rr a lot and um, that's the the speed triple with the kind of neo retro kind of styling low handlebars sporty riding position kind of a super bike that kind of looks like like a 70s sports bike um, and <clears throat> It's such a strange one that it's, I still don't quite know now who it's for. Um, we did a group test with it against a GSX-R1000 and a Tuono to see where it fitted, see if it was kind of in between the Super Naked and the Superbike. But it was just as uncomfortable as a Superbike. Um, so, in fact, the GSX-R1000 was, was more comfortable because it wasn't such a stretch to the bars. Um, so it kind of didn't, it didn't hold its head up high very well there. It, um, I also ran one as a long-term test bike, did a lot of miles on it, did 3,000 miles in just a short space of time, more than, more than that actually. Um, went to Walton Park, did a track down it, and it, it came alive on track actually, that's where you can kind of use all the power. Um, but it's quite slow steering, it's quite long, um, it doesn't feel very sharp. Um, and then I, I rode it to Spain. I rode it to Spain with my friend Bob and Mark and my brother Ben. And uh, it, was, it, was, it wasn't too bad on the motorway because you could use cruise control, take your hand off the bar, but it was brutally uncomfortable. It was, it, especially on the twisty roads where you don't get any respite, like the mountains, we went through the Pyrenees, which was absolutely sublime. But um, it was just, it was just so uncomfortable. <laughs> Um, and we did a series of, of, of more videos on that bike. Uh, we used it for uh, a, a series of riding tips videos we did for a, a White Dalton solicitors. Um, it looks great, but it's a very confused bike. Um, talking of great looking bikes, we rode the MV Augusta F3RR, um, the only super sport bike you can buy now in a conventional sense, you know, like a screamer. Looks beautiful nearly 20 grand it's got it's got wings and all the rest of it sounds amazing if that had been around when super sport bikes were were the thing i mean that would have had a massive following and we also tested it against the panigale v2 which you could say is a super sport bike which it is now because it's allowed in super sport racing um and the panigale is just just much more refined it's much more of a you know as a package it just works beautifully together but the bike kind of that's missing from that lineup for me is still the GSX-R 750, which I think would be better than both. I just wish they still made it. A um, couple of bread and butter tests we, we've done with the Z900RS um, against the Kawasaki against the Indian FTR around the uh, MCN 250. Um, the Z900RS is beautiful, absolutely. It's easily one of the best retros. It's just so beautifully designed. Um, the FTR is a little bit of a it's a bit, bit stiff, a bit raw, um, but yeah, the Z900 is, is a, an absolute amazing bike. Um, and then the next launch we went to was a double launch, Yamaha launch in uh, the Valencia area where we rode the Yamaha T-Max, which is just, just I love that bike. It's my, it's my favorite bike, the T-Max. And I had real uh, kind of uh, envy uh you know when when i was thinking about you know the people that were going to be lucky enough to buy it, I, I really really want one um, and we tested that bike again later in the year against an nc 750 and a bmw ce04 electric bike which is pretty good not very practical because it, the range isn't very good it's very very heavy um but as a kind of a short distance like fun kind of city run about where you, you don't have to worry too much about charging because you can charge at home it's really nice um but a 12 grand very expensive as well um the nc 750 won that particular test just because it's cheap it's it's easy to own it's all about commuters and reliability and practicality you know the nc 750 has got a boot as well you can put your helmet in where the tank should be really really nice um and then at that same launch we rode the mt10 just a bonkers Yamaha. It's nice to see the Japanese have still got a little bit of fire in their belly producing bikes like that. Um, it's got electronics, but you can turn them off so you can still have fun. The MT-10 is one of the easiest bikes to wheelies ever. Um, just a shame. Why did it have to make it so ugly? Oh, 
it's a real shame. They kind of snatch uh, defeat from the jaws of victory there. That could be amazing because um, it's a fantastic bike to ride. Um, and then we did a tyre launch at Mugello. Um, tyre launches are always, they're kind of kind of easy tests for us to do. You only have to write a tyre report at the end of it, um, which isn't a lot. Um, and you also get to ride a selection of bikes. Tyre companies normally bring a selection of bikes along, fitted with their tyres, and then we get to ride them. So this was at uh, Mugello and on the track, and then the roads of Tuscany. On the track was like a smorgasbord of super bikes. On the road were super nakies and sports bikes. And the tyre was the Pirelli Diablo Rosso Corsa 4. Fantastic tyre. Um, that was brilliant. You know, that's that's one of those pinch me moments that, you know, that's when road testing is really good. And then following on from that, we did a group test uh, with Pirelli, Sicily, um, on the roads uh, of Etna, around the Paragusa racetrack on a, a Panigale, Ducati Panigale V4, um, what was it, SP2, uh, BMW M1000RR, and an Aprilia RSV4 factory. Um, the, yeah, that's another pinch me moment. Those bikes are just incredible. That. They're too much now, you know, the level of them is too high. It's really enjoyable riding them, but you always kind of feel like you're a, you're a passenger on them, um, you know, that you're not worthy, really. The BMW was easiest to ride. It was just nice. You know, when the test finished, that's the one everyone wanted to ride. The Panigale is the most impressive. It's just the looks of it is just incredible. And, um, and the Aprilia, for me, the thing that spoils the Aprilia, and there's another bike that is in the same vein which I'll talk about later is the um, is the fact that it's so cramped I just can't fit on it I had a massive accident in 2000 no 1994 and I can't bend my legs properly and I can't bend my wrist properly so that kind of colors my opinion of some bikes and and as I've said before road testing is just an opinion um, and I just cannot fit on the RSV. So, you know, it, it's very hard for me to, to like it. That's why I like the Tuono so much, because it's a it's an RSV I can fit on. Um, and also while we we're uh, in Sicily, we did a super sport test, like a new wave super sport test, I guess you could call it, with the R7, CBR650R, and Aprilia RS660. Big surprise there was that the Honda was faster than the Yamaha around the little racetrack that we use called Racamolto. Um, just because it's longer revving, it's more powerful uh, and better brakes than the Yamaha. Yamaha's ABS is awful from from the R1 downwards. Um, not not on the MT10 actually. That wasn't too bad, but still the MT10's got weird, mega stiff front suspension, which gives a kind of a vague feeling when you brake. Um, but yeah, that was fantastic. But the the RS660 won the test. But they're still not as good as those old 90s and 2,600 four-cylinder screamers. Um, and we did another test in Sicily as well, uh, where we tested uh, a load of adventure bikes with um, Metzler's new uh, Sporttech M9, but in a 19-inch front size. So it allows you to have an adventure bike and have sticky tyres for the first time. Dunlop Sportsmart TT also uh, uh, have a tyre like that but generally you can only buy sports touring tires or dual purpose tires for adventure bikes. And while they're really good, they're always gonna be a little bit of a compromise for sporty riding. So sports tire steers a lot better. The tires are actually lighter. Just It just makes the bikes come alive. So that was really interesting. Um, and then on to Donington to ride the 30th anniversary Fireblade. Um, Honda had a big Fireblade event there to celebrate 30 years of the blade uh, during a BSB meeting. They brought along all their heritage bikes. Uh, a load of Fireblade owners came along, and we got to ride the 50th anniversary around Donington, which uh, should be manna from heaven for me because I'd done countless miles around Donington on Fireblades with the Haslam School. Um, but it rained, so uh, we only had uh, a couple of sessions in the evening after the, the the race action to ride the bikes. So we missed a load of track time while the the Honda guys put wets on the bikes. That was some. That was something to see. They changed these wheels and tires really quick. But by the time they'd done it, the track had dried out. So we went out on a track on wets in the dry, 
which wasn't very nice. And that's another bike that is so small. I just cannot fit on it. I just cannot warm to it, unfortunately. It's, it's a beautiful thing, but just, just too small. You know, that's one of the reasons why super bikes don't sell now. Um, people can't fit on them. I wish they'd make a big bike that was a super bike. I think they're missing a trick. I really do. Um, but then a more roomy bike is uh, Indian Pursuit. We went out on a launch uh, to the French Alps, to Chamonix, rode that bike. Really lovely. I just love the variety of, of my job that you can ride a, a scooter one minute, a super bike the next, and then a, a cruiser the next minute. They're all motorbikes, all good fun. There's a lot of snobbery about certain bikes if you if you only only like one kind of bike, but the the pursuit was really good. It handled really well, brake really well, good power. We rode it around Chamonix through Annecy, scorching hot. It was beautiful. Um, and then onto a Piaggio MP500, uh, MP3500 launch in Paris where it just hammered it down. Um, but in those conditions, it played to the conditions because you've got two front wheels and one rear. So it was nice and safe. Um, after that, we went on to Millbrook, which is an automotive testing facility near um, Bedford. And we rode the new BSA Gold Star. Um, the reason we rode it there and not on the road was I think there's a problem with homologation and paperwork. And since then, we still haven't seen hiding our hair with the bike. It's kind of gone weirdly quiet. Um, from a press bike point of view anyway, I think there's a few out there in the wild now that I've seen people ride. Um, but it, it's very odd how you get this kind of big fanfare, a new bike and then boom, radio silence. It was a decent bike for the money. It's going to go head to head with the... Um, Royal Enfield um, uh, Interceptor. I think the Royal Enfield's slightly better, um, but the, the, the BSA is nice. We're really looking forward to riding it. Although we rode it on the Alpine circuit of, uh, of Millbrook, which is supposed to be, um, replicates a road, our lead rider, mentioning no names, Gary Johnson, <laughs> treated it like a racetrack. So we're all flat out. So probably didn't, um, show the bikes off to their best really you need a, a slow meandering day on them on a country road to really appreciate the, the bsa but it's a decent bike um another couple of tests we did in the summer uh v2 versus v4 street fighter to see which was the best the v2 is actually nicer to ride um but the v4 is very appealing because of what it is i mean who doesn't want the biggest and the best but um the v2 is actually the better of the bikes and then we rode the, the 50 years M version of the M1000RR on the road in that kind of uh, mustardy, greeny, yellow kind of uh, finish, which looks much better in the flesh than pictures. That was absolutely superb. Um, and then on to ride something really different, a 90,000 pound electric arc vector, um, which is made by a load of um, ex uh, Jaguar Land Rover designers, really beautiful bike. Um, fast beautifully made you think it could be a ducati the way that the build quality is but very heavy um uh, it needs a reverse which it didn't have so that was quite tricky to manage and it's got a funny front end which works well but when you've got two new technologies like battery power and a funny front end the whole bike it, it didn't the bike wasn't very natural feeling um I think if they'd have just had the electric bit with normal forks, I think it would have been a lot more impressive. Um, but it's nice that there's something really different out there and it's a beautiful thing and uh, and, they're, and they're selling them. So, you know, the, the appeal is there. Um, a company that have come kind of back into our, um, into our thoughts now is Motor Guzzi. Uh, they came out with the, the Mandelo it's sort of been one of those bikes that's been kind of lurking around in the ether for a while, but we finally got to ride it um, from their factory in Como. Really, really nice bike. Um, I like the fact that it's kind of, it's one of the Italian brands. It still seems quite Italian. It still is quite, quite pure and not too flashy. Um, the the Mandela has got a really nice balance of um, kind of feeling old school and character with a lot of modern touches. There's a lot of like Aprilia technology in there from the engine to the, the, the electronics and the handling. 
really lovely bike. She's got those wings that come out, which do nothing. <laughs> um, bit of a gimmick, but that's fine. Um, we got to look around the Gazi factory. I'm starting to like Gutsi, as I should say, a little bit more. Um, maybe it's my age. I just like, I like the quirkiness of them. Um, I think they're, they're lovely things. We didn't get to ride it that much for a touring bike, for a sports touring bike. We didn't do many quality miles on it. We did a lot of slow miles behind a lead rider in some beautiful locations, but we didn't really get to ride it properly. So again, like I was saying, it's nice that we're now going to get the opportunity to, to get one when we do get one next year uh, and do some proper miles on it, compare it to other bikes, see where it fits in the, in the scheme of things. But that's a lovely bike. Um, we went on from that to do a little mini launch, some motor marinis. They're kind of back, they're, they're Chinese owned now with some say mezzos. Uh, one roadster scrambler kind of thing and one, one more roadster um, did that just down the road from my house it's nice to do a launch and have to travel miles to do it they're nice little bikes got a nice bit of Italian character affordable that was that launch was actually run by Potsky Media Mark Potter who used to be the editor of MCN uh, formed his own PR company loads of really decent people work there now um, and uh, yeah, they're great. They ran a really good show and they're only down the road from me. They're in the old Ducati building on the A1 between Peter and Stanford, Peterborough and Stanford. So that was good. Um, and then uh, a 125s test with, um, we got a new videographer at work called Joseph um, and he's living that 125 life. He's only 22. And, you know, when I do 125 tests or whatever, you know, you can test them with a road tester's brain. You can't really relate to those bikes because we rode them so long long ago i rode 125s or an 80 ar 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 80 in 1987 that's a long time ago so we gave joseph a theoretical budget of four or five or six grand got him to choose some bikes and then uh, reviewed them which is really interesting there was a fantic a zontis and a honda and uh, you'll have to have a look at mcn to see how that turned out um the final launch of the year was a, a mega three bike back-to-back -back launch, which happened all in the same place, uh, all from the same hotel. So I basically holed up in uh, Mahaka near Almeria for a week, and we rode the Honda Hornet, the BMW M1000R and the BMW S1000RR. The Hornet was really nice. You can read the full review on that. Um, interestingly, we did the same road route on the Hornet as we did the M1000R. And we rode faster on the Hornet because the lead rider was faster. So <laughs> I actually had more fun on the Hornet than a BMW because the riding was better. So that's ironic, isn't it? So that shows you how launches are only just part of the story. Um, we had much better photography and video from the Honda launch as well. So we got more out of it from a work point of view um, and much more technical information given to us strangely on the bmw launches there was no technical presentations you had to kind of find out along the way by speaking to the engineers which is fair enough but because of the way i have to work i have to hold myself up in hotel rooms all the time to write and i kind of miss out on that so it would have been nice to get more information on the beamers but still got a load without question um the m1000r was really nice i don't think it's any better than s 1000 r on the road and um, to save you money and the S1000R around Al Maria, just mind blowing. Just one of the, I've said in the video, you can watch on MCN. It's the, it's the closest bike I've ever ridden really to a computer game. You know, the electronics and the way the other bikes are set up now make life really easy. But the BMW was just almost foolproof. Had slicks on it. It had carbon wheels on it, which helps, which won't be on the standard bike um, unless you pay extra or unless you fit those tires. But it was just, pfft, it was something else. It was something else. Really enjoyable. Again, I didn't get the most out of the launch because I had to disappear off and right after a few sessions, which is a bit of a shame. Um, but um, a really nice way to, to end the year, really. Um, and then the final road test of the year was in uh, uh, riding the CCM Heritage 71 Titanium. Um, £30,000 boutique kind of retro bike. Um, yeah, that was really good fun. Um, two more things. Um, number one, I carried on racing this year, still riding for Prime Factors Racing on my amazing BMW S1000RR. 
the the focal point for us this year was the the spa six hours which i did with my brother which was just amazing we got a lot of our friends together as well to to help us run the bike and and, and us over the weekend and to ride that bike around that track for six hours or three hours really because we we split the the riding which was knackering actually <laughs> most people had three-man teams it was just heavenly um and leading up to that, I did a, a, a race meeting at Brands GP. I'm a little bit rusty with the racing now that I've not doing so much anymore. Hardly doing any. Um, got some top tens out at Brands GP, which I was really pleased about. Um, I'm finding club racing on big bikes now a little bit stressful. My anxiety level goes through the roof. So I don't think I'll race in club racing on a thousand again. I'd like to do some classic racing but on a thousand, it's all a bit too serious. Although I love riding it, I love riding it. Next year, maybe I'll do um, uh, the spa again, I'm not sure. And I'd love to love to get the bike off the team and, and in some way and, and live with it for a few years and do track days. Um, beginning of the year, we did some practicing at Brands and Snetterton and yeah, the bike is absolutely amazing. So what I've done, Mick, <laughs> is, um... When I turned up earlier, it was summer. <laughs> yeah. I the window down. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh. So I've got to drive back to Kent now. When oh. I get home, dead some feet. I'm sh. And and the final thing is to let you know what my favourite bike of the year has been. Um, we've ridden all these amazing bikes, been to all these amazing places, but the bike that has meant the most to me and I can't believe I'm saying this, and the 20, the, the, the me of 20 years ago would just wouldn't want to know me now, but it's the, the Triumph Tiger 1200 uh, GT Explorer, which is my long-term test bike. I've only had it for three months, but in that time I've done 10,000 miles, which is an amazing amount. I just can't stay off it. I use it for everything. It is so, it's not the most exciting bike in the world. Um, I'm still, I still love super nakeds and sports bikes for that kind of, for that distilled kind of excitement and, and rush and the, the feeling of crisp steering and grip and acceleration and pureness. An adventure bike can't get close to that. But what an adventure bike can do is just take you places a long way in complete comfort. I've never toured on a bike so comfortable for, before. I've only ever toured on um, super nakers and sports bikes and always been in pain. But this has just been amazing. I've done two big trips on it, uh, one to Southern Italy with my girlfriend and one to Sicily with my girlfriend. Um, and every single one of those miles has been enjoyable because it's been so comfortable. But it does handle, it is fast. Um, the only thing I don't like about it, that and adventure bikes generally, is the fact that the screens are so noisy. But that's because they're more or less upright. There's not a lot you can do about those. Um, but yeah, that it's been an amazing bike to live with. I don't know if I'd buy one. It kind of is instantly forgettable for me. When I get off it, I don't never look back at it like I would do an R1 and think, wow. But as a tool to do a job, long distance riding, in comfort, that lets you see the world, it is just amazing. I don't know how it compares to the other adventure bikes. And I think if I was to ride it in, a, in small doses, it wouldn't shine, but it's only living with it for that long that um, it's really you know, shown itself to be so impressive. Um, and it's been reliable all the way. There's been a few little niggles, which I'll talk about in my MCM videos, but nothing, nothing worth talking about. Um, so yeah, I rode the rally version as well, which is sort of tall, taller, <clears throat> 21 inch front with knobbly tires. I like the fact that um, it's tall because I'm tall. I like it. the leg room's the same because it's the same bike. It's just jacked up. But you know, I like the fact I can dangle my legs um, without touching my feet, which is, you know, when you want to stretch out, that's nice. But I didn't like the 21 inch front because all 21 inch front tires are knobbly and a knobbly tire has never got the grip of a smooth road tire. So it's, it's you know, they're brilliant tires, the modern day knobblies, but they, they're just not as good as a, a conventional road tire. So they walk a little bit going into corners. There's a little bit of shimmy through the bars. 
there's a lot more road noise because they whine like a Land Rover going down the motorway like an old Defender but overall yeah that's that's been my favorite bike of the year so if you've made it this far well done and thank you very much thank you very much for watching I've really um, enjoyed making these videos this year I've obviously enjoyed my uh, my continued charmed life as a road tester and I uh, hope I can do more of all of it again in 2023. So thank you very much and I will see you soon.